I feel able to turn the tables. I could do this. Just keep moving, keep your hands up, stupid. I feel lucid, a new viewing. I can see the end, I can see my future, I can view it. It's right there for the taking. Everything I've ever wanted, dreams are just waiting. I just gotta fight for it, willing to die for it, willing to like sort of. Hey, greetings from the year 3000, it still sucks. This is Phil J. Price. And you're listening to The Drunken Turkey Show. You're one stop for this sort of thing. Hit that button, like and subscribe. You know what to do, just like every other podcast. Just like every other podcast. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to The Drunk Turkey Show. Today we have some, well, we got a couple of topics that we're going to be going over. Uh, We're going to talk a little bit more about the uh, Sean P. Diddy Combs raid that happened yesterday we've got some more information about that we have a video of the aftermath so to speak you know the damage left behind by law enforcement in one of his mansions Uh, there's some stuff that you can kind of see in the background we'll go through those and a lot more but before we get into that one uh, we're going to talk about uh, what's currently going on out there in baltimore pretty crazy situation and we'll start off first with the uh uh, the sad news on here. There's been six people who have uh, now been reported to have lost their lives. Uh, this is uh, the Baltimore Bridge collapse. Um, yesterday, the Francis Scott Key Bridge was struck by a cargo ship around 1.30 in the morning, and the bridge went down. We have some videos that we're going to be going over and, uh, and things like that. Uh First, let's talk about the two guys that were just found. <clears throat> this is from Fox News. It says one truck was pulled from the water out of the Patasco River on Wednesday following the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore. While another vehicle remains hanging from the middle, uh, report says the development was reported in a Homeland Security memo that the law enforcement official described the Associated Press and comes as Maryland Governor Westmore says divers are still searching the water for six bodies of construction workers who are presumed dead in the wake of Tuesday's disaster. It's horrible. You know, there's a lot of conspiracies that are going on. A lot of people are saying certain things, you know, uh, was it orchestrated? Was it an accident? Was it planned? Was it an attack? And we'll look at the video and kind of go through that as well. So let's, uh, let's start off by doing that. Let's look at the video of what occurred. So this is the ship as it's approaching the key bridge. And what you're going to see is that right now it appears that the power turns off. Then it comes back and you see a bunch of smoke come out of the back. And then the vehicle or the, the, the ship appears to like start to veer. As you can see, to me, it appears that the tail end uh, of this boat is starting to swing out and then it swings into in my opinion because you can't see the back end from this angle it swings into where it forces itself into the uh, the pillar here of the bridge causing it to collapse now, i know a lot of folks are thinking that that when it recovers, the propulsion kicks in and it's pushing it this way. I read a article that stated that they dropped the anchors. And from what I understand, the anchors are in the front of the uh, of the boat here. And if that ends up being the case, then this cargo ship would have had the back end slide out in the manner that it did. Because it looked like it would have drifted between the two poles. For sure has a bunch of electrical problems and to me it just kind of swings up swings out hmm. it could have been something with the propulsion as well i'm not sure where the the engines are on this cargo ship if they're in the rear then yeah it would definitely make uh, a sense and right here i'm not sure if you guys can see my my mouse or not let me zoom this up Right here, uh, there's a conspiracy saying that this is 
There's a like fire, like an explosion. I, I see what they're saying. <clears throat> Um, but what I think it is is just the metal scrapping against each other, causing a bunch of sparks. There's no actual. Um, let me see. Let me pull this down. I don't actually see like a fire. I see sparks coming out of it. And that tells me that it's the metal rubbing up against each other. Uh, let's see. Let's look at this video. I think that there. This is this is probably a. A wire bridge or held up by cable. Okay, I'll mute that. Let me fast put this on faster speed. So this is before this is you know, how long this bridge is. This is I-695. This is one of the busiest bridges uh, that there is out there in the Baltimore area. And the one of the reasons why a lot of people think that this could be some sort of conspiracy or something, you know, nefarious or more of a planned situation is the fact that, you know, this port here in Baltimore is, is crucial for uh, commerce coming in and out, not just, not just the United States, but international commerce going back and forth. Um, you also have, uh, shipments that are, you know, coal, coal, I believe, I believe coal is one of the most uh, biggest things that are shipped out of there. I wouldn't be surprised if you guys start seeing things get a little bit more expensive over the next couple of weeks. If you guys haven't filled up your gas tank. Uh, I suggest you probably start doing so. Now, as you can see, these, this is a cable bridge. So when these uh, cables, um, when these cables snapped, I, I'm sure there was some sort of sparks generated from that and then also the metal uh, grinding against each other would also cause significant amount of spark um you know my father's a welder and there's this tool that you use when you light up the uh, like a torch and it's just basically uh, metal scratching each other and sometimes that can throw out quite a bit of spark and that's basically what i'm seeing in this last video to me, it looks like it's sparks that are. Let me know in the comment section. Do you guys think it's a fire? Do you think it's an explosion? Do you guys think it's sparks? Let me slow this down. So you're going to see it right here where the, uh, the bridge uh, snaps in half. And so you have... You know, let me put this even slower. Could also change, <laughs> make the quality better too, right? So you have what looks like sparks up here at the top of the bridge, sparks already forming at the bottom, basically where it snaps. Right here. And I just think that those are the cables probably swinging and crashing into each other, or if it's hitting the metal on the side of the uh, of the bridge. I'm not seeing an explosion. I'm not seeing any any smoke or um, you know that puff of smoke that comes out after some sort of explosion as well. You know, I'm not seeing that there either. To me, I think it's just a spark. See right here. When the when the bridge actually hits the pillar, I think it's gonna cause it create a huge spark. You see that? Again, more. This is when the metal is hitting metal. So yeah, that's what I think. That thing. That's exactly what it is. Friction sparks. <laughs> yeah. One hundred percent. I one hundred percent think that's what it is.
Now, this could have been way worse. This could have been completely worse. This is re coming out of the Washington Post. And <clears throat> I don't like the Washington Post very much, but, you know, we'll talk about it here. Maybe a call from the ship stopped Baltimore Bridge traffic saved lives. And I got some images from the shipwreck. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty bad. And like, you just, how massive this ship is, is just insane. And you can see right here in this picture uh, where they drop down the anchors and that is in, in the front of the ship. So uh, I think that's what probably swayed the, the cargo ship into the bridge or into that part of the bridge. A cargo ship the size of a, sk a skyscraper drifted dangerously close to a major Baltimore bridge that carried more than 30,000 cars a day. The crew of the Dolly issued an urgent mayday hoping to advert disaster Tuesday. First responders sprang into action, shutting down most of the traffic on a four-lane Francis Scott Key Bridge just before the 95,000 gross ton vessel plowed into the bridge, piling up at about 1.30 a.m., causing multiple sections uh, of the span to bow and snap in a harrowing scene captured on video. C-13 dispatch, the whole bridge just fell down. Someone shouted in an emergency channel. Maryland Governor Wes Moore hailed those who carried out a quick work as heroes and said that they saved lives, but the scale of the destruction was catastrophic and will probably have far-reaching impacts on the economy. And see, that's what I was talking about, the that, that harbor there. You know, it's not just with the United States, but it's also international. But it's going to really play a huge toll on the economy of the, of the United States. And especially in that region there of Maryland and northeast part of the United States. It's a uh, and it's going to be closed down for a while. Obviously, it, it's going to be a while before they can open up this port, before they can open up also the, you know, the bridge. I mean, it's going to have to be rebuilt. But it really makes you question how 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 safe are the bridges i mean i get it this was a huge vessel it, it hit probably the weakest point you know but i feel like there should i don't know maybe be some sort of concrete barrier outside of these um you know points where the where the bridge anchors into the uh, ground i just feel like maybe perhaps having a barrier about 100 yards or 100 feet 200 feet away, you know, that way if something does drift in that direction, it'll hit that versus the actual bridge causing it to, to crash. It's insane. Much of the 1.6 mile bridge fell, sending at least eight construction workers repairing potholes into the 48 degree weather or 48 degree water of the Patsco River. Two were rescued, including one who was seriously injured. Authorities announced Tuesday night that six were presumed dead and suspended the search. Authorities plan to resume the hunt for victims at 6 a.m. Wednesday. Crazy stuff, y'all. Crazy stuff. So... What's going on, Mark? We have Mark Davison from Steeler Nation, Australia. How you doing, my man? Good to see you. We need to get you back on the show. So this is the approximate route that was taken. This one's better. I left Port of Baltimore, turned up and came out, and then just started to lose, you know, its propulsion and, and, and things of that nature. And it just kind of crashed into one of those barriers or into those pillars that anchored down the bridge. Look at how massive this cargo ship is. Like each one of those cars or, or ship shipment boxes are freaking massive. They're huge on their own. You know? And it just look at how it twisted up this bridge. And this is a really, really good indicate uh, picture of to determine like the size, the, the sheer size of this, of this um, ship and its cargo. They searched the cargo. In fact, I think they did. And there's apparently some hazardous material that have also been compromised. And 
uh, there's probably some hazardous material in the waters as well. Thank God that didn't happen at rush hour. Yeah, that would have been that would have been horrible. I mean, it's horrible already. Nobody should have lost their lives, but that could have been a uh, a complete massacre. This is a piece of the bridge that landed on the ship. None of the crew on this ship, I believe, are injured, but they are, from what I heard last, are stranded on the boat. They cannot get off the ship, so the crew is stranded on the ship. So I grew up in the Bay Area. And they have tugboats to bring in those ships into the bay. Do they not have this here? Uh, it says CD. Thank you, CD, for your comment. That's a good question. You know, you would assume that they would have just to get. I mean, this is a safety issue. I mean, this is a huge safety issue, not just a safety issue. Uh, it's a, um, you know, it's a depend. Our nation depends on this harbor. Dang, that's a big ship. Liz says, I did hear the scanner have someone say that night he smelled diesel. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a crazy situation out there. So this is coming from the uh, New York Times. It says the vessel had a complete blackout and could not restore its engine power. A few minutes before the cargo ship dolly crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge early Tuesday, the vessel had a complete blackout that knocked out power to the engine and navigation equipment, an, an industry official said. Okay, and we saw that. We saw that the power went out a few times. But the thing is, this vehicle had had some problems with its propulsion for months before the crash and was actually, you know, docked in the harbor for the last two days or prior to it crashing into into the bridge. So there was reported problems and they still yet allowed them or still were utilizing this ship with the problems. Apparently, obviously, they were ongoing problems. They were just docked in and had to be there for 48 hours. And I understand things happen, you know, and you have to, you know, you have to fix them. And if they get fixed and they're properly fixed, then, you know, so be it. But, you know, if you're having this many problems in 48 hours and then this happens immediately, like, how did, how did, I don't know. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense to me. You know, they, they didn't even get out of the dang bay before it started to have problems. So you can't tell me that, <clears throat> you know, they did more than a Band-Aid. Know what I mean? There's no way they did more than a Band-Aid. But this is going to cause a major investigation and not just obviously this ship, but into many ships that are across uh, that are being used as cargo to ship things back and forth. I think there's going to probably this is probably going to equate to or, or equal to uh, probably more regulation, which is going to probably equal to more cost, you know, and those things are going to end up hurting the consumer's pocket as well. And, and our economy and the whole nine yards. This is a horrible disaster on all fronts. It says here, the ship that struck a key bridge on Tuesday was reported to have issues with, with its propulsion in June. Uh, the 984-foot container vessel that lost power and crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge on Tuesday had issues with its propulsion system just months before record show. The Singapore flag dolly suffered a power outage as it bore down the I-695 bridge before ramming into a vital support beam that gave way and caused part of the structure to collapse into the Patsco River in Baltimore. 
We can confirm that the crew notified authorities of a power issue, Maryland Governor Westmore said in a press conference on Tuesday. During the blackout, the Dolly experienced momentarily, momentarily loss of propulsion. The Marine Time and Port Authority of Singapore said in a statement citing a report of Synergy Marine, the ship's manager. The same ship was flagged in June for an issue related to its propulsion system, according to the records of the International Database for of Port Control in Asia Pacific. However, it's unclear if the deficiency in June was at all related to what caused the crash on Tuesday. The issue was reported in San Antonio, Chile on June 27 and listed as a propulsion and auxiliary system deficiency. An attached note reads gauges, thermometers, etc. So they were having problems with, you know, things that are reading improperly. Uh, you know, the blackout could have been caused by you know, something overheating and the gauge is not working correctly. You know what I'm saying? So those things are possible. Now, per the records, the problem was not deemed as grounds for ship to be detained in Chile. Clay Diamond, the executive director of the American Pilots Association, told the Washington Post that post uh, that Dally lost power at around 120, around eight minutes before the crash. Pilots on board tried to start an emergency diesel generator to repower the ship and restart electrical systems, he said. That might be where the smell of diesel is coming from. But the Di but Diamond told USA Today that the propulsion didn't appear to kick back in. There was still some steerage left when they initially lost power, he said. Per the outlet, we've been told the ship never recovered its propulsion. See, that's why I'm saying I think that th that um, that little quick movement there is probably the uh, the anchors dropping and kind of swinging this cargo ship around. Uh, the cargo ship weighed what nine, almost a thousand uh, tons. So, you know, uh, even though you have a bunch of anchors there, it's going to take some time to stop something like that. You know what I'm saying? So, the Dolly was previously involved in a separate mishap in 2016. It scraped its hull against a quay in Antwerp, an incident that was attributed to pilot error. On Wednesday, Singapore's Marine Time official said the Dolly had passed previous port inspections and that the June incident was a faulty monitor ga uh, gauge for fuel pressure, which was fixed before the ship left the port. So now we're getting a little bit more information here. It's the fuel pressure. I mean, if you don't have fuel, that's going to cause an issue, right? You know, you're going to lose your propulsion if there's no fuel. You know, you have your... Yeah, I'm not sure how ships work, but I assume they're probably similar to, you know, anything else. You know, you have to have air, fuel, heat, and and some sort of like fire or spark, right? So if you can't tell how much fuel you have going into it. It could cause an issue. When reached for common, a representative for Synergy Marine referred business insider to Singapore authorities for a statement. The bridge collapse was triggered. The bridge's collapse has triggered a state of emergency in Baltimore and six members of a small construction crew working on the bridge during the crash are presumed dead. Authorities say the officials managed to stop the traffic on the bridge before it collapsed. But it's not just that. It had been. It had been. Um, let me close all these dang ads. On this. According to the Daily Mail UK. Dolly cargo ship suffered several electrical problems while docked in Baltimore days prior to the bridge collapse crash. That saw it suffered total power failure, loss of engine failure, and port worker says. So it had been stalled there for the last 48 hours for issues with the lights and issues with the power. And, and immediately, once it has left the port, it is having more issues with power failure. Yes, the crew is still on on the boat, Mandy asked. Uh, so the crew is literally still on the boat, yes. They are stranded there uh, for a while. I think they said a couple of weeks before they'll be able to get them off of the boat, which is weird, right? And I think that might also be fueling some of the 
speculation out there like why are they you know why can't they send an emergency you know the coast guard out there and get these guys off of the boat you know what i'm saying it don't make sense to to forcibly keep these guys up there unless there's some sort of investigation and they don't want these guys to leave somewhere right so that's what's been kind of fueling also the conspiracy that this was a planned attack or that there is some evidence of a possible planned attack by not allowing some of these crew members to, or not saving these crew members uh, from a ship that has crashed and has a bridge on top of it. Interesting stuff. See? And TSB was on on the bridge. For those that know, the NTSB is the National Transportation Safety Board. I believe this is true. Mandy asked, the ship is going to Sri Lanka. So this is from uh, CNN. This is an update of several... Uh, several different updates on the bridge. It just says here that NTSB received six hours of voyage data from the ship that crashed into the bridge. Hazmat investigator identified 56 containers of hazardous material. That's, that is 764 tons of hazardous material, mostly corrosive flammables and some miscellaneous hazard materials class nine hazardous materials which would include lithium ion batteries she said at the news briefing so if this was some sort of attack and i'm just claim you know allegedly conspiracy you know the whole nine yards right you know don't youtube you know it's me just saying my thoughts <laughs> let's just say that this was that kind of situation i mean if the plan was to not only crash this into the bridge but also cause a huge you know, explosion, they could have done that, you know, and apparently, uh, you know, some of these hazmat containers were breached as it states right here. It says here that Sheen was seen on the waterway. I'll be mean, honest with you, I have no idea what Sheen is. I mean, unless it's Charlie Sheen. Was he... <laughs> There were 23 individuals in the cargo ship at the time of the accident. There were 21. Well, I guess they fixed it because this one says here there were 21 crew members. Oh, well, yeah, the two pilots. My bad. There were 21 crew members and two pilots on board the Dally cargo ship when it crashed into the Baltimore Keys Bridge, according to the National Transportation Safety Board. Chair Jennifer Holmdy. The, NS, the NTSB is leading the investigation. Holmdy stated the board will try to determine what occurred on board Dolly and also what also, look at the structure of the bridge itself. You can see them right here about two hours and two minutes ago. Officials recovered bodies of two bridge workers. Apparently, they were inside of a vehicle. They didn't make it out. Colonel Roland Butler said that shortly before 10 a.m. Eastern time, divers found a red pickup truck in about 25 feet of water. It says the uh, two victims of this tragedy were trapped within the vehicle. It is Alejandro Hernandez Fuentes of Mexico and DeLorean, DeLorean Ronial Castillo Cabrera from Guatemala. The workers were the workers who were filling potholes on the bridge at the time of the incident were from Mexico, Guadalajara, El Salvador, and Honduras, officials said. Butler Jr. confirmed that both men whose bodies were found today were working on the construction company. One was identified by a driver's license in his pocket, the other was identified by a fingerprint, he said. The post has been updated with more details in the news conference, including correct spelling of the victims' names after an update from authorities. They're still looking into it. They're going to look into this. And I, you know, people's lives were lost. Somebody has to be accountable for that. 
you know, and especially if there's like a history of issues with this specific ship. I don't know. I mean, the only the other thing is too, like, but you know, the United States or news media is uh, I'm claiming that the officials are saying that they don't believe this is an attack. You know, they easily could have said it was and made this into a bigger system, right? Or a situation. And, and you know, for a second there, I almost thought maybe. Because time of night, you know, the amount of casualties are, are small. You know, things like that made me kind of think, is this one of those situations where, I can't remember what it's called. Was it Pigs of Bay, Bay of Pigs? The uh, JFK thing where he uh, refused to sign where... Um, Americans, the CIA wanted to basically attack Americans on a cruise ship and make it look like it was Cuba just so they can go to war with Cuba. You know, that kind of crossed my mind here. I'm not going to lie. That sort of crossed my mind in this situation. You know, but then they're not blaming anybody. So now this is um, pretty, pretty crazy stuff right here. Check this out. This is some of the stuff that was found outside of the uh, that's crashing up on shore. I'll mute this guy. Check that out. I'm not sure what that is. It's probably some oil with material grease. One hundred percent. Look at that stuff. That's nasty. Stuff in the cargo ship. It took five years to build that bridge. Whew. Now, I'm sure there's going to be some sort of detour and things like that, but that's going to be a complete nightmare. You know, for the next few years, as far as traffic and things like that. I mean, this bridge was basically built to uh, alleviate traffic. You know what I'm saying? So. If you have any questions for me or comments, try to put a couple of stars at the beginning. That way, when I scroll through here, I can see who's, you know, wanting me to answer a question and also if you want me to read a comment since it's myself it'll be difficult to to go through it all at once carnival is already rerouting i'm not surprised by that they didn't have time to be warned the first tugboat call came out at 126 bridge was gone one by one for 29 yeah 100 percent but they were able to stop some people from getting on the bridge. It, it, it was, yeah. they were able to do some, some of the assistance, or they were able to stop some of the people from getting on the bridge. They were able to help some of the people or uh, lessen the amount of casualties that could have been there. You know, and also, I mean, you know, happening at 1.30 in the morning, you know, can you imagine if it was 1.30 in the afternoon? The casualty, the, the, the amount of loss, in a situation like that, that would that'd be crazy. Diversity hires crash boat. Enough said. Okay. Did you see how many storage units were on the boat? My group came and says, Yeah, quite a bit, quite a bit. All right, so let's go into our next topic today. We're going to be talking about the Sean P. Diddy Combs case. And it's um, brewing up. His house was raided yesterday. Uh, a surprise raid, so to speak. I know I wasn't expecting it. There were some that were, you know, bomb first. Reggie White Jr., the former head of security for Death Row Records and now has his own podcast and platform that talks about, you know, hip hop and the hip hop scene and things from back in the early in late 90s to early 2000s and when death row was at its heights at its highest he had some things to say he's been calling out a raid for a while 
you know, here recently, there's been a few lawsuits that have dropped against P. Diddy Combs. And I think that has a lot to do with why he had the raid. Now, I have some more information about some of the things that have come out on P. Diddy and some more videos that you know, one of them is kind of disturbing. So this one's from the Miami Herald it says, what did the agents find when they raided Diddy's mansion? Where is the mogul? What to know? Four people in Diddy's entourage were cuffed by federal agents after they raided his Miami Beach mansion on Monday. Another Diddy associate was busted on drug charges at the Opelika airport, and the rap mogul was questioned by agents at the airport before the plane linked him, flew him uh, to the wait, wait. Before a plane linked him, flew to a Caribbean island. Was he on this plane that flew to the Caribbean island? Let me read that again. Rap mogul was questioned by agents at the airport before a plane linked to him flew to a Caribbean island. That's not all suspicious. The agents ultimately let the four go, but Miami Day police arrested a man, Miami Opa, Opa Loca Executive Airport on Monday afternoon, who was described as Diddy's mule in a lawsuit against the music producer. Now, this is the person that they were saying is the mule. This is former Syracuse basketball player. Well, far from uh, Brendan Paul, well, far from, you know, where he was hoping to go, I, I assume, when he was, you know, playing basketball for Syracuse. Former Syracuse basketball player was arrested on two felony charges at the Miami airport on Monday. He's accused of working as rapper Sean Diddy Combs alleged drug mail. Brendan Paul is as he is listed on the Syracuse roster, was a walk-on guard for the program from 2018 to 2020. The 25-year-old was booked for cocaine and substance control or controlled substance. Man, I'm all over the place. For the cocaine, controlled substance possession, and released Tuesday after posting a $2,500 bail per Miami-Dade County record show assessed by Yahoo Sports. The record spelled Paul's first name as Brandon, but the mug, but the mugshot published by TMZ matches his roster photo. Uh, he was apprehended at Opalaka Airport bef before he could aboard Diddy's private jet. Oh, so he was trying to get on Diddy's jet. So he was with Diddy. They were together. He had cocaine and suspected mar marijuana edibles were reportedly found in his luggage. Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. So that was the uh, the drug meal. At the same airport, airport, federal agents seized Diddy's phone and questioned him before clearing him to fly with family and friends to Antigua and Barbuda, a twin island in the Caribbean nation just east of Puerto Rico. So he did leave. He's no longer in the United States, guys. Did he got on a plane and took off to an island in the Caribbean nation? Interesting. You know, with all of the stuff that's going on and, and the things that are said about him, I mean, is, is leaving the country really the best look? You know, I, I find this to be odd. You know, this is a huge red flag for me. Elizabeth says, I highly suggest everyone read the Little Rod lawsuit PDF. You will not be disappointed. Crazy stuff in there. Oh, there's a bunch of crazy stuff. I have some of the stuff that's in there that we're going to be talking about here. On Tuesday morning, the plane was at VC Bird International Airport in Antigua, Barbuda. But there was no evidence that Diddy landed in Antigua, Barbuda. A government official on the island told the Herald. But you just said that he got on a plane after he was questioned. And then they took off there. Antigua and Barbie, Barbuda have an extradition treaty with the United States, the official noted. I mean, yeah, they might. But can you get to an island that doesn't from there? You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, let's just say you want to go to an island that doesn't have an extradition treaty. Do you think it's best to go straight there and leave the paper trail of where you went? Or do you think that you would probably go there through other avenues where... 
you know, even though they may suspect that that's where you went because of the extradition stuff, you know, they have no real tangible evidence. That's where you went. Right. You know, if they go looking for him, they, what are they going to find? They find that he went to these, this Caribbean island or these Caribbean islands and, and then left from there and went somewhere else because they have no idea where he's at right now. And if that's the case, if he showed up there and somehow secretly got off of those two islands and nobody knows where he's at. That sounds like a runner to me. The incidents followed Monday's raids by Homeland Security investigators, agents at Diddy's Mansion on Star Island in Miami Beach in Los Angeles and in Los Angeles, part of an ongoing sex trafficking investigation into the rat mogul. A source familiar with the Miami Beach raid, Miami Beach raid, uh, told the Herald that Diddy, whose legal name is Sean Combs, and his entourage arrived in Miami over the weekend and were, were here when federal agents simultaneously searched his homes on Star Island and in Los Angeles. Feds were concerned that Diddy 54 would destroy evidence, prompting the secretly coordinated raids, the source says. The raids came a month after the lawsuit filed by music producer Rodney Little Rod Jones accused Diddy of being a leader of a criminal enterprise that could qualify a, as a widespread and dangerous criminal sex trafficking organization. On Monday, Jones amended the complaint filed in the New York federal court to name the actor Cuba Gooding Jr. as a co-defendant. This one was crazy. When I read what he is accusing Diddy and Cuba Gooding Jr. of attempting to do or they're trying to do. It's just kind of blow my mind, you know. Cuba Gooding Jr. is a what? Yeah, he was a person that I, I enjoyed watching his movies. This is completely shocking to me. You know, you know I thought he was a good actor. Uh, and obviously he's innocent until proven guilty. And these are just allegations. However, yeah, he hasn't denied these allegations and he's been accused of being or been accused in the um, the New York legal act that allowed uh, victims of sexual assault to uh, sue their their the people that assaulted them and you know outside of the statute of limitations you know axel rose from guns and roses was one of them. Jamie Foxx was another person who was also listed on that uh, as, as a person who was also listed as a person who was accused of uh, a sexual assault. All, all them guys, including the, I think the mayor or the former mayor of New York, they have all denied the allegations yet. Cuba Gooding Jr. is the only one who hasn't said anything, whether it's, you know, yes or no, he's not denied anything. Let me see if I can find. The part that. I went into what what happened. Because apparently. So what Jones is accusing Cuba Gooding Jr. of doing and and P. Diddy is of. He accused P. Diddy of grooming him for Cuba Gooding Jr. In that there was a situation where uh, P. Diddy left Cuba Gooding Jr. alone in the studio with with uh, with Little Rod, uh, the producer, and the producer claims that at that time Cuba Gooding Jr. began to have sexual advances towards him, which included grooming or gr uh, groping him and grabbing him and. Uh, uh, Un uncomfortable p p places. Crazy stuff, crazy stuff. In a statement to the Herald Tuesday evening, attorney Aaron D Dwyer, who is representing Diddy, slammed the raid as gross overuse of military level force. He also said Diddy was never detained and spoke to, was never detained and, in quotation states, spoke to and cooperated with authorities. 
this unprecedented ambush prepared with an advanced coordinated media presence leads to a premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs and is nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. Dwyer said, there's been no finding of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. I don't know about that being innocent stuff, man. I want to find... where it talks about the details of what he had done and and some of the evidence that a little rod has against them. I think it's on here. If it's not on here, it's it's right here. No. Um This says here at Booby Trap on River at at a 24-7 strip club. It was business as usual Tuesday afternoon. Few men were inside the club, which sits on Miami River at 3615 Northwest South River Drive. In his lawsuit, Jones alleged that Diddy forced him to invite sex workers from the Booby Trap to Diddy's Star Island home. The workers, the, the workers, the filing states, were accustomed to servicing the mogul. A source familiar with the club's operation told the Herald Tuesday that VIPs often showed up to the club spending thousands of dollars in a couple of hours. When asked if Diddy was as frequent at the club, he said all of them have party there. This isn't what I was looking for. I hope I didn't lose it. Ah, it's right here. This is what I'm looking for. Um, I don't know what I just dropped, but... This is what I'm looking for. So this is from Newsweek. It says, following the raids on his properties by Homeland Security, there has been a renewed interest in the lawsuit found against Diddy, uh, against Sean Diddy Combs in February. Rodney Little Rod Jones sued the 54-year-old, asking for $30 million in damages after accusing Diddy of sex trafficking, abuse, forced drug use, fraud, and sexual assault. The music producer claims he suffered psychologically and since he suffered psychologically since working with Diddy on his love album off the grid record that the music mogul failed to pay him for his efforts. So some people are saying, or I mean, I, I guess some people can say that maybe he is disgruntled because he didn't get paid. And, and these are where these accusations are coming from. And I get that, but I think this guy has some evidence too. Uh, let's carry on. Diddy broke the silence through his attorney on Tuesday and Homeland Security raided after Homeland Security raided his homes in Los Angeles and Miami in a sex trafficking investigation, slamming it as overuse of military level force as search warrants were executed. Now, we already spoke about that. We talked about that. This is far from. OK, so. Here they talk about they bring up the last part of. Uh, Aaron Dwyer, P. Diddy's lawyer, last part of his statement says innocent. Uh, adding that Diddy was innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. And then he goes on to say this is far from the case. According to Jones, who in his 73-page lawsuit also included photos and screenshots and stills from videos to aid his case against Diddy. So this is not just the he said, she said situation. You know? Oh, Alicia, I have that video. We're going to watch that here in a minute. But that's not a he said, she said. This includes photos, screenshots, stills from videos. Did he deny Jones claims in a previous statement from his attorneys? We have overwhelming, indisputable proof that his claims are complete lies. Well, you got your own pictures or what? What's going on here? Some of the pictures are graphic in nature and depict sex acts while others show the aftermath of an alleged shooting. Whoa. Now they did say that there was some murder allegations. Is this the uh, pictures that they may be referring to? You know, when they spoke about murder as being a topic of discussion, when it came to investigating Sean P. Diddy Combs, I assume that it was probably an investigation into the Tupac murders back in 1996, where, you know, the one person who's been arrested for it, Q 
Keefe D has basically stated that Sean P. Diddy Combs put put the money out or a hit out for Sug Knight or Marion Sug Knight, who was the former owner and um, businessman of business owner of Death Row Records, and also Tupac Shakur, his star artist and rapper. Great musician as well. I, I listened to many of his music. I assume that that's where that came from. But could it be from a shooting of somebody else? That would be crazy. That would be crazy. The defendants. Firstly, there are individual photos of the defendants, including Universal Music Group CEO Lucian Charles Grange. Many of the photos are professional headshots, but there are some candid photos of Diddy's son, Justin Combs, and close-up photo of Diddy, Diddy himself. Other photos in the back, uh, uh, for background include Jones in a studio with other musicians. From there, photos became more graphic and incriminating. Two shots, two, two photos showed what Jones claimed to be the aftermath of a shooting in a music studio restroom where a man only identified as G was shot. The photos show blood, clothes, and paper towels strewing across the restroom. Jones alleged Diddy and his crew forced him to lie about the events of the evening of September 12th, 2022. The music producer alleged that they were at the music writers and producers camp at Chalice recording studio when Diddy's son Justin and G were having a heated conversation that ended up ended up in the restroom. So it was Diddy's son who may have done the shooting in this situation that they covered up, or well, at least that's what it sounds like. Jones says gunshots rang out shortly after and people gathered around the restroom when he noticed G was bleeding and he was afraid that he might be shot next. He was the only one that assisted G and got him to the ambulance with Diddy alleging telling people to say the shooting happened outside of the studio. The lawsuit includes a screenshot from a news article that reported the shooting happened outside the studio, which Jones says is incorrect. Now he has pictures and, and, and images of a, an alleged crime scene inside of the restroom with blood. Kind of, you know, giving some credence to the story that he has, in my opinion. The next series of claims cover a range of sexual assaults, including that Jones claimed to ha that happened to him. The first lot of photos show screenshots of two men appearing to be engaged in a sexual act, which Jones says Diddy forced him to watch, telling him one of the men who is named in the suit was an esteemed musician that Jones admired. The lawsuit claims Diddy used Jones' admiration of the musician to groom and entice him to engage in homosexuality. Diddy alleged told Jones that homosexuality is homosexuality is a normal practice in the music industry. Next was a series of stills from a video from a party that happened on Thanksgiving in 2022. They showed Jones and Diddy at the, at, a, at the party, but also rapper Young Miami and her cousin. Jones says he believed Diddy told young Miami's cousin to follow him into the bath bathroom to offer sexual services. And when he rejected her advances, she followed him back to the party and tried to have sex with him in front of the other attendees. Jones says the music mogul forced him to take cocaine at the party. Another series of videos still show Diddy talking to Oscar winning actor Cuba Gooding Jr on board of the rapper's yacht. Jones says he believed Diddy had been grooming him to pass off to his friends, including Gooding Jr. Some of the stills show Gooding Jr. in close proximity to Jones, which the lawsuit says shows actor touching, groping, and fondling Mr. Jones' legs, his upper inner thigh, near his groin, the small of his back, near his buttocks, and his shoulders against his will. That's really crazy. I mean, this if this don't sound like you know an Epstein type of situation, I don't know, I don't know what does, man. You, know, you have actors, musicians, you know, wealthy people, 
and he's getting groomed. <sighs> it's insane. In the lawsuit, Jones accuses Diddy of sex trafficking and forcing him to pro procure sex workers for him when they were in Miami. Photos show, of the, photos show some of the alleged sex workers, but their faces are blacked out. Sex workers criminalized in the state of Florida. <clears throat> some of the photos also show the strip clip called Booty Trap on River, where Jones says Diddy sent him to find sex workers, even though Jones didn't want to. Mr. Combs provided Mr. Jones with an exclusive bad boy baseball cap and required him to wear it to the booty trap on the river as a signal to any sex worker he approached that Mr. Combs was in town and had sent Mr. Jones to recruit them. Another explosive claim in the suit alleges Diddy drug Jones and the latter and the latter woke up in bed, finding himself with two sex workers and Diddy. Wow, I just remember the you know reading that it was just the sex workers, but apparently Diddy was in bed with him too. Two photos in the suit alleged show the sex workers and Diddy sleeping in bed. Damn, that's nuts, man. I'm not gonna lie, this is just this is nuts. This is insane. Yeah, I'm I'm sure we, we may not see Diddy for a while if he's if nobody knows where he's at now. One allegation was Diddy regularly partied with sex workers and underage girls. The suit shows multiple video stills with Diddy dancing with women whose faces are blacked out, but claims they are underage or sex workers. Some of the remaining images include alleged threatening messages from DeForest Taylor, the A&R manager at Diddy's Love Records label, to Jones after he tried to get, get the money Diddy owed him for his music producing work. The lawsuit also compared Christina Kuram, Diddy's chief of staff, to Ghislaine Maxwell, who is serving a twenty-year prison, uh, twenty years in prison for ha for sex trafficking women and girls for her ex-boyfriend and notorious businessman Jeffrey Epstein. The lawsuit even included a photo of Kuram sitting beside Diddy on a lounge and a similar photo to one of Epstein and Maxwell. It was important to, def to it was important to defendant Kuram to have Mr. Combs drug of her choice immediately ready when he asked for it. The suit reads, it also claims that she required all the staff from butlers to housekeepers to walk around with pouches full of different illicit drugs should Diddy want them at any moment. And so, no, I mean, I saw this one video where he was talking and he, he didn't look all there. So maybe right beside him or right behind him was Jay-Z. And then on the other side, it looked like uh, Leonard Fournette from the, um, uh, Running back from, I think he was with the, with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers here recently. And it was, he looked, P. Diddy looked like he was on something for sure. The suit also alleges Karam ordered sex workers and prostitutes from Mr. Combs and includes photos of the drug 2C, which is a combination of ecstasy and cocaine. Uh, crazy stuff, man. Crazy stuff. Uh, this is a um, this is the video that everybody I think is talking about, or one of the videos that everybody's talking about. I'll play this. Everything's good. Everything's Selling great. out arenas and everything. Yeah. Starting to act different, huh? You, you, ain't, you ain't been calling me and hanging out the way we used to hang out. Well, I mean, you haven't. I mean, you try to get in contact with me, you know, through all my, you know, business, you know, partners and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But you you never really got my number, so right. Okay. My number. Yeah. yeah. Everything's good. Everything's Selling great. out arenas and everything. Yeah. Starting to act different, huh? You, no, you, no, ain't, no. you ain't been calling me and hanging out the way we used to hang out. Weird stuff, man. You know, the other one that we showed the other day where he's talking to, to, to Bieber saying that it was a 15 year old's dream, you know, to be with him for the next 48 hours, that they were going to have parties and bashes. I think he even said full buck wild parties. I mean, I don't know. I do not know. This one, this one is creepy too. I mean, all the ones that I've seen have been creepy. There's the, the one where he adopted a little girl 
supposedly from the street. I don't know. Now, P. Diddy's had his house raided, and we have some images from his house. Now, let's go through uh, the raid itself, and we'll pause it and com uh, put some commentary to what we see. So this is a closet. It appears to be a bunch of women's clothing, I assume. So I'm assuming this is a ladies' closet. You can see the, like these jackets here, have this fluff stuff. Then again, did he has worn some weird stuff before? Let me um, make this bigger. So they have these drawers open here. So whatever they were looking for, they thought they could find in these drawers as well. I think drugs was a huge component of the search warrant. So you could or, or would be able to find drugs in, in a drawer this size. Now there's some green, big old green looking bear thing in the back there. It looks like it's missing an ear. What's that about? See, check this out. You have this cabinet thing open. Then you have a bunch of looks like DVD videos underneath here. I would have assumed that if it was anything of importance, it probably would have gotten picked up. But just something I had seen these. It could be books. Are these things here, I wasn't sure what they were at first. Uh, these two white boxes with the, uh, it's like a silver circular deal in the front there. But it, it matches the, the stand here. You see how that has that? It's a white stand with a circle thing there. So I think it's just part of the room furniture. So this is a restroom. Again, I'm assuming this is a, a, a female's restroom. Now, this closet that they're going into, uh, I'm assuming is a male's. So these, this could be his son's. It could be his. I'm not sure. But they went through every drawer, pulled everything out. Probably looking for tapes. Could be looking for... Um, um, discs any of those things for any evidence of the uh, of the recording that little rod claimed he did so back here you have what looks like a uh, another part of the closet and then there i think there's a a card or a poster that says happy father's day so i'm assuming that aspect of it is diddy's Unless one of his sons is a father already. So you have those, those are Uggs. I don't know if Diddy wears those or not. Typically, I, I assume those are female. The same shoe here. Are they Vans? No. Went through everything here. This is another bedroom. This is a different you know, shelf on the side of the bed. See, it says right here, Happy Father's Day, this poster here. There's some shoes you can see to the right. I'm assuming this is P. Diddy's closet. This is one of the safes that they opened up. I left a lot of stuff in there, so. If it was empty, that would have been an indication of, you know, them taking a lot of things out of it. And if it was empty, that would tell me that they found something. Concrete, I mean, 
empty safe, what could be in there, right? Since there's stuff in there, uh, I don't know. It may not be the only safe he had in the house, too. <laughs> Big old bear, another bear. This could be an office. I think that's what this is. Kind of pulled everything out, went through everything. Now, obviously, this is probably coming from P. Diddy's camp. Oh, that's the end of it, so I'll just have a cling. This is obviously coming from P. Diddy's camp. Uh, I would assume that, in fact, I'm going to stop it. I would assume that if there was, you know, something to, discriminating or anything like that, that it probably wouldn't be videotaped. I don't think this is coming from the the police in this situation. There'd be a lot more details if it was a police video. There'd be uh, a lot more going on, zooming in, zooming out, um, you know, evidence, presenting evidence that they're going to take or not take. So this tells me that this is from Diddy's camp. So if there was anything like a like an odd room, right, all red with a massage table in the middle, uh, they probably wouldn't show that on this clip, even if it was completely destroyed. You know what I'm saying? That would incriminate him. So we have to take that with a food of thought. Um, they've only released only a few amount. Like was this like 31 seconds worth of a footage of his of two mansions in that area. So there's a lot that they didn't put into this that we didn't see. So we got to take that as well as um, you know, food for thought. We'll go through some of the questions before we call it a show. Elizabeth says, this is a trial I want broadcasted. It's a train wreck. I agree. I agree. I wonder where they will end up, you know, filing charges against him. If it's something that he's going to court in uh, Miami for, like if some of the allegations are in Miami, and I mean, one of them is that, you know, booty trap bar, and then he has some other ones out there in New York or, or wherever. It could be a, it's, you know, international or going through a couple of different states. You know, so the FBI is definitely going to get involved in this. It, if it was just a Miami thing, then there'd be a lot of information available. But I don't know. I don't know how the feds work when it comes to how how much information they put out there and and how their trials go. It'd be interesting to see. Hashtag where is Ava? That is the little girl he supposedly adopted from the streets. Federal agents must have raided my closet over and over. <laughs> yeah. Puffy jackets mean puffier jackets. Why did he always asking people why they don't want to be hanging out with him in every video? I wonder why. I wonder why. Uh, go check out some of the things that 50 Cent says about, about P. Diddy and wanting to hang out. It's it was funny, but after all these allegations that have come out, it's like, man, it's more true than not, probably. Uh, yes, these are pictures after the raid. According to TMZ. Does he have any daughters? I think so. I mean, he has seven kids. I, well, I heard he had seven. I'm not even sure about that. Did he, did he post these talking smack about L.E. leaving him house a mess? Probably. That's what I'm saying. I mean, this is definitely coming from P. Diddy's camp. It's not coming from, you know, law enforcement. They're not going to disclose this. And if this is coming from P. Diddy's camp, they're not going to put anything in that would discriminate him in view of what's being seen in this camera. You know what I mean? Four daughters. It's not a shell house. I don't want to see what's in that nightstand. <laughs> Jeremiah says, Diddy's always been on a power trip. Do you remember making the band on MTV? Dave Chappelle, 
Dave Chappelle even had a skit acting like Diddy making a go get some cookies. Yeah. Thank you, Afton Ford, for coming in with a gifted Drunk Turkey Show membership. Make sure you guys turn on your members, your gifted memberships on. Uh, just hit that join button, and then there should be an option to turn on gifts. Uh, we do a members only live usually once a week on Sundays. You don't want to miss it. Federal cases aren't televised. Man, that would suck. It's federal, so it must be real bad. Yeah, and all, not only that, for them to to do the the what they did, you know, in the manner that they did it, to whom they did it to. I mean, this is a guy that I believe he's a billionaire, well, at least self-reported billionaire. I mean, I know he has a crap ton of money, uh, but you know, you have somebody there that is wealthy, extremely wealthy. You know, has power within the music industry and probably has some friends and that are politicians and things of that nature. You know, you, you better have your, your your teeth crossed and your eyes dotted in those type of situations. You know what I'm saying? Uh, because they're going to hire the best of the best lawyers. They're going to dig into everybody and everything. And so you need to make sure everything is done correctly. And so for them to go to this extent, man, they got to have some. I got to have something good on him. <laughs> Cat Williams is the new Miss Cleo. Cat Williams has been saying it for a while. He's the new. Yeah, I won't say he's the new. No. I would not say he's the new Alex Jones because, you know, a lot of stuff that Alex Jones was saying about the frogs and 9-11, like so many things he was saying end up being true. Look at the first deal J.E. got slap on the hand. Yeah. Why did they ground this plane? I don't know. But I believe they, they checked it. They took his phone and they talked to him for a little bit and then they let him go. But we'll see how this portrays out. I want to say thank you to everybody that is tuned in and checked us out. And please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. Um, you know, I think that, you know, we probably didn't get a, uh, I put out two shows earlier today or two clips of the other, the last two um, shows that we've put out. If you haven't checked them out, go check them out. If you haven't seen the last couple of lives, you can check out uh, those videos that I put out. It's a condensed version of those lives. It's um, all the dead air ticking out. It's also the, um, the bantering and stuff going back and forth between myself and Blue and and or, you know, you guys. And so it's just the content stuff. It's just strictly the topic of that show. Go check it out. You won't be disappointed. Um, so refresh. I'm going to be putting those out more often. Uh, but without that, with that said, I want to thank you guys. You have a safe Wednesday night. I'll probably be back on tomorrow afternoon uh, if something happens or if there's some kind of breaking news. Uh, but if not, I'll be back on Friday night for sure. I did talk with um, the director of um, Search and Rescue, SATX, uh, with Nina. She, she came on the show a couple months ago when Savannah Soto and her boyfriend went missing and their bodies ended up being found. They were the search and, re, uh, search and rescue company that got called. They've been insisting with the Caleb Harris uh, missing persons out of uh, Corpus Christi. He's from New Braunfels slash San Antonio area who is attending the University uh, of a and out there in Corpus. And he went missing suspiciously, you know, just kind of vanished in thin air. Uh, she's going to be coming on the show this week. We're going to talk about some of the... Uh, searches that they've done, you know, what they've found or, you know, what, what they're also thinking. So you don't want to miss that one. That one could be tomorrow, could be Friday. Um, we're, we're trying to settle in on a, on a date for that. So make sure you guys check out this. With that being said, I'm out of here, guys. 
Peace out. Oh, Andy, you haven't heard about this? Uh, I think I did a video on it on Caleb Harris, like Friday or something like that. Uh, it should be there, but I'm probably going to air that one out tomorrow. Uh, edited version. Uh, just put it out there onto the YouTube. So you guys can go check that out as well. AM Central. Um, there's been some rumors going back and forth whether or not or he was just part of the Corpus Christi AM. Uh, I've also heard he was also enrolled at, uh, at, at Central as well. So not sure. But yeah, he, uh, three o'clock in the morning, he went outside barefooted and disappeared. His Uber Eats order was fanned outside. And that's how his roommates knew he disappeared. This phone pings outside of his apartment complex. And then it's a mile down the road. And then it's disappeared. You know, it was going into the direction of the hospital, which makes me think a couple of things. But we're going to be talking with Nina. She's going to break down the scene, what she's seen out there, what the road conditions are and things like that. So go check it out. That being said, I'm out of here, guys. Peace.